if anyone if anyone has time please go visit it it's really good yeah so i'm kaushal i'm the grocery maintainer most people know me as kshlm on irc and everywhere else and uh, today i'll be talking about glastody 2 what we have done on glastody 2 till now and uh, what still needs to be done but first let's i'll give you a brief overview of what the problems were with glastody this was what we had done last time at barcelona so the basic problem is the current glastody doesn't scale in lots of ways Okay, this is a very poor drawing that I did last night, so that kind of tries to give an overview of what Glustody currently looks like. So we have Glustody running on all nodes. Each node has its own store, the Glustody store, that is valid Glustody. And yeah, Glustody does a lot of things. Glustody does a lot of things to make sure that this store is in sync everywhere but it doesn't work out all the time and you get a lot of problems it is really important for us to keep this store consistent but uh, we always end up in we end up in an inconsistent state or a split brain state pretty easily and uh, Managing that is hard and apart from that there are things like maintenance where the code base has grown so large right now it's like half of the GlustFS code is in GlustD right now. So we've got three different mechanisms to orchestrate operations. We've got lots of copy pasted code around. So whatever Jeff said yesterday probably applies completely to GlustD right now. So whatever Jeff said, yeah, and that makes contribution really hard because yeah, we've got all this craft plus there's no documentation of anything, nearly anything. And uh, yeah, and it also makes integration with existing external projects or make integrating new features into Glustody very, very hard. So with Glustody 2, we want to solve Solve all of this if possible. So now let's move on to see what we have done so far. Short answer is not really a lot. The problem is, uh, the thing is, I had expected since the la uh, last summit, I had expected by this time we will have Glustody 2 running and managing clusters out in the wild. But that didn't come out as I expected, mainly because some of the developers that were working on Cluster 2 got distracted and we started looking at other things. Uh, it's mainly me who did that. So I started looking at other bits instead of looking at Cluster But we are picking up speed. Uh, in the last couple of months, we have uh, started development again and uh, we got some newer developers in and uh, yeah, we'll be growing in speed. and. Uh, We'll start doing things. So for Glustody 2, we want to first provide the f for uh, we want to provide a first release of Glustody 2 that is usable for everyone. And in this first release, we just mainly want to concentrate on the core of Glustody 2. The core is basically all the infrastructure required for everything else. So these are things like uh, the transaction framework so that we can write new commands, we can orchestrate actions across the clusters. Every uh, clusterfs command needs that. We need plugins, support for plugins, so that we don't we have easier integration or e an easy way for integrating other features. And just the basic commands for volume management and cluster management. This is what we are going to be providing in the first release when we do it. So uh, when I say basic commands, it's uh, volume management, it's just volume start, stop, create, delete, uh, status, that's it. We're not going to be doing 
uh, we'll probably also be doing expand and shrink. Uh, we'll not be doing things like, uh, say, manage SHD at that point in time, or manage your quota Ds or all of these stuff. So for our first uh, release, we'll be targeting this. Yeah, all of this hasn't been put down anywhere. This is the first time I put this down properly any place. So I'll uh, make sure to update my uh, update the Cluster D2 wiki with all of this information. But yeah. And uh, yep. So when I say get this done, I want to get these basic core features implemented and have proper documentation <coughs> for others to refer to when they begin implementing their features. Okay, so this is gonna this is the bird's eye view of the cluster D2 cluster. Looks really similar to the old one, except that now the store is replaced by etcd, and etcd manages uh, etcd forms its own mini cluster inside our larger uh, cluster cluster, and uh, cluster D speaks with etcd to do the store. So we are offloading all of our store management to etcd and letting etcd take care of it that removes a whole lot of code from cluster d and uh, makes our transactions more flexible and easier to design actually and uh, yeah we still have the ngross and uh, connections which we had in cluster d but uh, the thing with gd2 is for transactions when they happen they just speak to the nodes that is required and it doesn't flood the whole cluster with RPCs and just uh, magnify the load. So yeah, the central store. So we're currently using etcd, but this could basically be any key value store system that provides get, put, delete, and lock, and watch. So five things. So there are other things like console, or Zookeeper, or maybe something newer that comes in later, that also provide this. We could easily uh, make Cluster D2 use them, but we will, for our development right now, we'll be sticking to etcd. Uh, the thing is, uh, we use a package called libkv, which can talk to any backend. So that's fine. If in later when we want to do it, we can easily shift to anything else. Uh, right now, Cluster D2 automatically sets up an etcd cluster. So whenever we do a peer probe, uh, Cluster D2 automatically starts the etcd servers, uh, does whatever etcd requires, etcd peering, etcd cluster formation, and creates an etcd cluster, and connects to the cluster. So users don't have to do actually <coughs> do anything or about managing etcd, because that's one thing people were concerned about, that having sh moving to an external project would make ClusterFS harder to set up. Uh, yeah, we want to avoid that as much as possible because that is easy setup is one of our strengths. So we don't want that to go away. There are some other things we are looking at doing. One of the things is embedding etcd. etcd in uh, 3.1 has, uh, it's right now in pre-release, it's not released. Yeah, etcd in 3.1 has in introduced support for embedding etcd itself into other software projects. So mainly other Go projects, not all of them. But yeah, GD2 is written in Go, so we can do that. What this would mean is it makes setup even easier. Uh, we would reduce, we could reduce the number of ports that we use. Right now, we would be using four ports if we go with a separate etcd and separate gd plus d2 uh, for the management interface itself so this is something we can avoid uh, and uh, i'm also there is also a plan for getting automatic promotion and demotion of etcd servers so the current implementation is not really intelligent it just does like the first several pro uh, peers that come in uh, are made at CD servers, everything else is at CD clients, but uh, that doesn't work well. So, we need ways to promote, demote, or do this automatically if possible. So, 
there is this project called MGMT by Purple Idea or yeah he was he's been very active in the cluster community in the past yeah so he's already done a lot of work on this region so I'll be working with him and trying to make that as a probably a reusable package so that other people can also use this and uh, yeah those are the things we want to do with the store right now and yeah this store one setup right is available to external users as well so it's not just cluster d2 it could be other people like hook scripts or uh, things like georep or the newer uh, guys coming up the server side replication and all of them they need a central store and this hcd or uh, this store will be accessible via glustery to gd2 for those users so yeah and uh, yeah so we've also created the transaction framework the transaction here is not the same as the transactions we've been talking about for uh, for all the other f file of uh, IO path operations right now or the FOPs but yeah this is for, for cluster D2 a transaction is basically a way to run actions across the cluster and make sure that they run everywhere so yeah the transaction framework as we have designed it right now is a flexible transaction framework this means that you don't have a specific order of steps that you need to perform for all operations. So like previously in uh, Lustre D1, we had this three-step or two-step transaction mechanism where it was uh, lock, stage, commit, and unlock. Or, or so four steps, basically the major steps were uh, stage and commit. So all of the operations had to be, uh, what do you say? had to follow this pattern and yeah that led to probably a lot of bad code to make sure that their operations works in that framework this one doesn't impose any such restriction you can build your own series of steps and have it executed <laughs> but we also make uh, will be providing a suggested uh, what do you say template for your transactions for commands make sure that uh, yeah to make sure that uh, you can do stuff easily if you want to yeah uh, so and as i mentioned earlier the steps run only on those nodes that are required <coughs> it doesn't run on the whole of the, uh, the cluster cluster so rpcs don't reach all of the other clusters only it reach only those clusters that take part in a step, not particularly the transaction itself as a whole. So a transaction right now, as I say, it's a list of steps. The li a step is a function that needs to be run and an associated undo function that un that reverts everything that this undo function had done, uh, sorry, the original function I had done. And then a list of nodes where uh, the function needs to be run, where the step needs to run. So this thing, uh, this can be built dynamically, this list of steps you can build dynamically whenever you want and build a new transaction, get those uh, steps or actions done across the cluster, however you want. Yeah. And what happens is uh, the transaction framework gets this list of steps, it starts ex uh, first checks if all the nodes given are online and then establishes connections to each of the nodes right now we are doing that we don't have live connections all the time <coughs> it will it may change later on it will connect to each of the nodes that are uh, that are that need to be connected to and then start sending the steps if a step fails it stops the transaction at that point and starts calling the undo functions from that point backwards so that whatever changes were done are undone yeah so this way we avoid leaving around uh, littering around unneeded stuff every place apart from the transaction framework we have 
recently finished a daemon manager the daemon manager is going to provide a common way to manage all the other cluster fs daemons uh, we in cluster d one we have we recently introduced something similar but again it's not being used by everyone earlier before the service framework that as we call it in uh, uh, cluster d1 earlier it used to basically almost all of the different daemons used to run in their own way they didn't follow any standard format so this daemon manager ensures that everyone uses this particular uh, framework and uh, provides the same set of features to everyone so yeah this framework will be used to manage all the daemons started by cluster d bricks shd code ready snapd and probably even plugins uh, because the way we do plugins is going to be a little bit different from normal so yeah the daemon manager uh, describes a standard daemon interface that the daemons need to uh, or a daemon configuration it need not be an interface interface in go terms but yeah it describes a standard interface that needs to be uh, implemented and based on that the daemon manager can uh, manage anything it can start stop communicate and communicate easily with the daemons it allows it will allow users to do that there are a couple of more features that we want to add probably things like auto restart or get dependencies between daemons available so yeah, yeah so maybe something like a uh, self healed daemon needs to only start after that brick is a particular brick is online or a particular set of bricks is online it doesn't make sense for it to be uh, started before the bricks so yeah things like that and uh, we have a basic rest api implemented right now uh yeah it just does these things so these are basically the only commands you're going to implement for the first release but yeah these are not <coughs> properly documented again so uh, we have a rest api page but it's uh, the current code and the documentation doesn't probably reflect each other uh, we need to re revisit that and also we should uh, uh, be thinking of possibly doing uh, writing a formal specification of the <coughs> api using some of the standard tools like swagger or open api we haven't decided on how auth would work so that's still open and another question that i'd like to see, get an opinion on is should we try grpc the thing is we've begun using grpc for our rpcs and grpc gets a lot of the things that we want already so it's got auth built in it's got an easier way to, to <coughs> specify apis so maybe we should and again doing that would probably reduce another port that cluster d uses so yeah the rest api is at this point right now whatever we have works but it's not uh what do you say it doesn't match whatever we have specified it should uh, uh, as it should be next up is grpc so right now we recently again switched over to grpc since it's entered uh it's 1.0 version recently uh this is going to be used mainly for cluster d to do cluster d communications right now it's basically for <laughs> right now on even in the future probably it's only going to be for peer and transaction operations it's not going to be for anything else this will be also used for cluster d to brick or the other daemons so for things like wall file fetch port map brick ops others that needs a uh, more work because we need to in integrate the c part of grpc into cluster fs but we'll do that when the time comes yeah, and as i said uh, we'll also be using grpc for plugins because we need a we'll define our plugin interface using grpc and that's how cluster will communicate with plugins and the good thing is grpc enforces tls by default because it's based on http2 and that's good because we want that and but there is still the matter of figuring out how to act, get valid certificates automatically installed so that's something we'll have to figure out later uh, we've improved our logging so by using structured logging so structured logging is helps us provide more context 
with every uh, helps us easily provide more context with every log message uh, and it also makes it easier to parse for machines so it's not like a random string of uh, not not a random string but it's not a string of sentences it's not something like that so you got a fixed message plus associated parameters or associated context with it so one example is for uh, this is from our transaction framework so yeah you get the you get a <coughs> excuse me you get your log messages in this format so you can see that there is a lot of information attached to this log message which allows you to easily track or make sense or uh, of what's happening there so instead of going ahead and reading a sentence and trying to pick out information from the middle of each sentence this makes it more obvious uh, we use it in the transaction framework and we uh, we make sure that uh, everyone who use transaction framework also uses this structured logging uh, this makes it so much easier to track transactions across the cluster that way if anything goes wrong you can easily trace an operation and figure out what went wrong where uh, there are still things to do here uh, the transaction uh, sorry sorry uh, the formatting that we use now is the default provided by the package that we are using we could improve it and uh, yeah we also could do things like message IDs to make it easier for people to query uh, or to figure out uh, or to provide proper documentation for specific errors that makes it easier yeah and so there are a lot that remains to be done yeah so we have some stuff that we will be rewriting so we have Walgen that is basically a copy of what it's in cluster D1 right now and also it's not a particularly good copy it just works <laughs> so yeah that needs to be rewritten there is a lot of things that we haven't done and yeah we need to document everything so <coughs> yeah so I'm talking about pluggability here not just plugins basically because by pluggability I mean that GD2 should be pluggable as in all of the frameworks that we do need to be or it uh, need to have this characteristic of a pluggability that is they, it should allow external users to use the framework without modifying the framework itself and we should provide well documented interfaces that users need to know okay so pluggability is required in a lot of places for a lot of different things to add new accelerators to <coughs> that is uh, to add new commands to extend the rest api to add new daemons to be managed by clustery and things like events i haven't talked about events yet but yeah so we'll be having an events interface which might be similar to what arvinda is doing but it's not exactly but yeah so we want plugins to be able to push their own events or listen for their own events and things like that the actual plugin model will be a sub process plugin model because go doesn't right now allow dynamic runtime loading of shared libraries but uh, with 1.8 i think there is this is going to finally land because i i just saw a patch like two weeks back that landed into the code base uh, it will use grpc for communication and grpc will define the plugin interface and what this allows is you can write uh, since we are using a standard rpc mechanism you can write your plugins in whatever language you want and cluster should be able to use it that's it and this is inspired by HashiCorp's Go plugin package. Uh, we are not using that directly because it's Go only right now and it uses its own custom RPC interface, so uh, we don't want that. There's Walgen. Yeah, as I said already, blah, it's, a <laughs> it's just a basic implementation. Walgen needs to be flexible, pluggable, and composable, probably, so you can compose multiple graphs together and build a larger graph for. Uh, for brick multiplexing or things like NFS servers or SHEs or yeah. yeah so we have more information in that issue there uh, 
going to step forward. Yeah, so events is going to be a really key part for us because we think events is one of the ways we can keep cluster flexible. So then, guess for example, uh, say you want to implement a Cotard server, right? Cotard. Thing is, cluster you won't be implementing it within ends itself. So you would have a Cotard plugin possibly. The Cotard plugin would get a volume start event, and it would go ahead and start the Cotard or do whatever is necessary for Cotard to manage that volume. The plugin would do it. So cluster two wouldn't be doing it. So yeah, designing a nice events uh, implementation is needed for us. Yeah. <coughs> and we need to move along. Yeah, this is the last slide. Great. Yeah, and hooks. Yeah, again, we need that again because we already have it. Uh, this will also most likely be leveraging the events framework and just provide it. It's going to be the same as whatever we do now. You have place on your hard disk where you dump scripts and plus it will execute them. <laughs> and uh, I thought no. I had a demo, <laughs> but <laughs> the bricks said no because they didn't want to run. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, two questions. Um, one is on the eventing. Mm -hmm. I really encourage you guys to work together to make sure there's only one implementation e because uh, the way you guys are right now is working very well. But I understand where you're going to, and that means you need to you have to satisfy. So. Definitely make only one. Yeah, so the thing is with the events being worked on right now, it's yeah. like not just the management part, it's like sure. from the IO path, you're gathering events from the clients and everywhere else and just, just sending it out. Yeah. Make sure that. Uh, I, I know, uh, it might not be what we'll be doing the same, or maybe we can leverage the work, or yeah. we can do the same. Yeah, we will do that. Yeah. The second thing is uh, I don't know if you're doing this already, if you are, that's, that's cool. So I would also encourage the cluster D to become have a mock outside uh, model so you can pretend to have you know 30 machines or whatever so that way you as an in, as a developer now you're communicating with cluster D too and you can write your plugins not have a real system just pretend that you do and everything is on SED and it makes it much easier to write your plugins so yeah, also makes it I'd like help with that because I'm not really good at doing okay, it. Okay, then we can so talk yeah. after. So yeah, I forgot to mention that. So yeah, we need help with writing tests because right. not a lot of us are familiar with writing pro good unit tests. And uh, yeah, we need help with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, um, one brief question or suggestion since news strangely hasn't mentioned it. I mean, there is also here a certain overlap with what Hakimi does. So I, I think we should really join forces as much as possible and, and reconcile some of the code. I don't know whether it will land, I mean, volume creation stuff you managed, uh, mentioned. Oh, I, I mean, some things may be, let's say, combined. Okay, the volume creation right now is going to be what just Gus do. does. Okay. It's, there's no intelligence there, nothing like ah, Hecate. Okay, good. It, yeah. It's just an interface between Hecate telling Gus yeah. Just so Hecate still the would talk to Gus and get its <laughs> talk out. So right. Michael, the plan is... <coughs> Yeah. So the plan is whatever currently cluster T does, we are going to stick to the same logic with cluster T2. We are not going to overlap with the Hecate's intelligence and bring that into cluster T2 at this stage. So for now there is no overlapping. Yeah. What we could do is possibly reuse some of the REST API bits or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that we can collaborate on. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, everyone.